and foreign investment. Furthermore, increased competition and market access can advance innovation and entrepreneurship, driving economic growth and development. Small and medium scale enterprises, SMEs, play an important role in Africa's economies, considerable play, contributing considerably to employment and income generation. According to the Ghana Statistical Service, SMEs constitute some 92% of businesses in Ghana and contribute some 70% to the country's GDP. This impressive contribution is a testament to the entrepreneurial spirit of Ghanaians. However, SMEs often face challenges related to market access, financing, and regulatory constraints. The AFCFTA can provide new opportunities for SMEs by expanding their market reach and reducing trade barriers. By supporting SMEs, we can promote inclusive growth and ensure that the benefits of economic integration are widely shared aid budgets are being drastically reduced. Ladies and gentlemen, another limitation of the current development cooperation framework is the fragmentation of aid efforts. The multiplicity of donors, each with their own priorities, conditions and reporting requirements often leads to duplication of efforts and inefficiency. The fragmentation can result the lack of coherence and coordination, impeding the effectiveness of development interventions. To resolve this issue, there is a need for greater harmonization and alignment of aid efforts. Donors and Friends of Africa should work collaboratively with African governments to ensure that aid, if requested and granted, is delivered in a coordinated and coherent manner. This encompasses aligning aid with national development priorities, streamlining reporting mechanisms, and promoting mutual accountability. By instituting a more coordinated approach, we can maximize the impact of aid and achieve greater development outcomes. The current development cooperation framework has one fundamental limitation. It does not tackle the imperative need for structural transformation of Africa's economies. While short-term projects and requirements are necessary for immediate needs, they do not necessarily lead to long-term sustainable development. To achieve Africa's transformation, there is a need to focus on structural reforms that address the root causes of underdevelopment and champion exclusive growth, which are primarily the continuing reliance of our economies on raw material production and export, which do not generate value-added economic activities or surplus value. It is to meet this structural deficit that my government has placed such great emphasis on this flagship program of One District, One Factory, an initiative that is producing commendable results and will assist strongly in the structural transformation of the Ghanaian economy. A shift towards long-term investment in critical sectors such as agriculture, education, healthcare, infrastructure and industrialization is urgently needed. It necessitates policies that advocate for economic diversification, elevate productivity, and create decent jobs. By prioritizing structural transformation, we can build resilient economies that are capable of withstanding external shocks and driving sustainable development. Effective development cooperation also demands the active participation and ownership of local state stakeholders. However, the current framework often limits the involvement of local communities and civil society organizations in the planning, implementation, and monitoring of development projects. This can lead to a lack of relevance, sustainability, and accountability.
to alleviate the situation, it is vital to push for inclusive and participatory approaches to development. This entails empowering local communities, enhancing the capacity of civil society organizations, and ensuring the development interventions are responsive to the needs and aspirations of local people. By encouraging local ownership and participation, we can enrich the sustainability and impact of development cooperation. Good governments and strong institutions are fundamental to sustainable development. However, the current development cooperation framework often pays insufficient attention to governance and institutional development. Weak governance and structures, corruption and lack of accountability undermine development efforts and hinder progress. To overcome this challenge, we should prioritize government reforms and institutional development by strengthening democratic institutions, promoting transparency and accountability, and building the capacity of public institutions. By deepening governance and institutional frameworks, we can create an 